Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline, where we're going to explore the interaction between Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. Today, I want to show you how to create your own 3D objects using meshes inside of Photoshop, and then we'll bring those as abstract objects, true 3D models, into After Effects. Here's how it works. Now, inside of Photoshop, you can use textures to create your own 3D models. And essentially, you're using the grayscale values. If it's a 50% gray, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to go ahead and create the same basic primitive shape. But if you go lighter or darker, it's going to push the object in or out. Let's take a look here. I'm going to go ahead and just take a new object here. And let's just hit OK. And we're going to fill this with a gradient. We'll start with 50% gray. Shift Delete, and we'll choose 50% Gray. And then what I want to do is grab the Gradient tool, and we're going to go from black to white. Now let's put that on a new layer, and we'll drag. And we'll do a linear gradient from top to bottom. And we'll back that off just a little bit. Okay, so what you see there is that instead of pure 50% gray, we've got black and white. It's getting a little bit darker on one end and a little bit lighter on the other. Now let's start here, and we're going to make two layers to begin with. This is going to be called Mesh 2 and Mesh 1. Now with Mesh 1 selected, when I say 3D, new mesh from grayscale, and let's just do a cylinder. With the pure gray, it just makes a simple cylinder. However, if we do that same command on this layer that goes from darker gray to lighter gray, you're going to see something cool happen. You actually get a tapered effect. Now there's a little bit of texture in there, and that's partially because of the noise of the gradient. If you want to smooth that out, you can do a little bit of gauge and blur ahead of time and cut down on some of the noise. But there's still going to be a little bit of that. There we go. And we have a true 3D object. Notice we can rotate around these objects. In this case, it's a cylinder. And I made something that looks a bit like a funnel. Now, these are all basic primitive shapes. But where this really gets cool is when you start to get a little more creative with those grayscale meshes. So let's try this. 3D, new mesh from grayscale, sphere. And what it did is created a pretty cool star with a little bit of a punch out there for where that star was on the side of the sphere. Or if we do things like this. Here we have a hard repeating black and white pattern. If I go ahead and do that same mesh as a sphere, you see we get a pretty cool sort of notched ball. Or if you ran that as a cylinder, you get sort of a cool spoked wheel effect. You see there. Now, let's just go ahead and we'll name that Object 1. Let's go to the next one here. We'll do the same thing, new mesh from grayscale. We'll do a sphere in this case with the soft blur. And you see we sort of have a more gentle object here. Sort of a nice soft star shape. And we'll do one more. Here's our last one. And let's do a sphere. And you're going to see we get a little bit of a bumpy textured surface here. So if you didn't want the spikes to be as high, reduce the amount of contrast between the lightest and dark area. More contrast, bigger extrusion. Okay. So we've got those three objects. Let's just save this. And we'll save this as a Photoshop file, 3D Primitives, and jump on into After Effects. There we go. Bring that in as a composition. And in the Import dialog box, make sure you tell it to bring in the live 3D objects, live Photoshop 3D. So when you do that now, you're going to see, in this particular case, that we have three pre-comps. Each pre-comp is the 3D object. And inside of each of those pre-comps, if you step in, there is the 3D object itself, 
and a controller layer. You don't actually move the 3D object, you either move the 3D camera or use the controller layer. So if we twirl that down, you'll see that it has full transform commands. So you can do rotation on any of the axes. You can scale, you can animate, do anything you want. You also have material options so you can control how it reacts to the lights in your scene. And remember, this is a full 3D camera. So you can move in on an object, you can go away from it, you could rotate around it, and in all cases, you have a true 3D object that you could drop into your After Effects scene. So this is a great way to create abstract shapes or textures or just abstract designs for your MoGraph pieces using those 3D meshes. Hope this gives you an idea on how you can take 3D further, and it's all with the interaction of Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. For Creative Kyle, my name's Rich Harrington.